Hi, my name is Jack Monaco, but like many people, I think it would be pretty cool if I was Iron Man. Now, every year at my school, we have a week of rallying and class spirit competitions, uh, and every day of this week has a dress theme, one of which is Character Day. So this year, with just about a week and a half to work on it, I decided to embark on my most ambitious costume build yet. A working Iron Man arc reactor. Let me show you how I did it. After a bunch of research, I ended up coming up with my own design for this build. I wanted a relatively realistic reactor that could be worn both inside and outside of my shirt. This necessitated a design that was completely self-contained. The general idea was that all the power and electronics would be housed inside a puck behind all the aesthetic details. I would then have some sort of harness to wear underneath my shirt and the puck would sit into it. To be worn more visibly, the puck would be pressed into the harness from the outside to sandwich the shirt material. I started modeling the main ring in which the outer string of LEDs would be housed. I got outside dimensions from the RPF and modeled a ring with square channels cut into the sides for the wire wraps and a main channel for the strip of LEDs. I printed the model in orange just to check how it felt. When I was happy, I printed it in clear PLA. The problem that this model seemed to have was that, since it was clear, the light highlighted the gridded printing structure inside of it. So in the next version, I modeled with thinner walls and printed with 100% fill. This also helped the light bounce around a little more and shine through clearer. For the wire wraps on the main ring, I modeled little U-shaped pieces that would sit in the channels. The pieces have small walls to keep the wire in line. These also took several versions to get a good snug fit. Eventually, when the model was perfected, I printed all 10 of them in gray PLA. The lights for this build are cut from a strip of self-adhesive LEDs that can be cut off and soldered to at custom lengths. At this point, I soldered a pair of wires to my main LED strip and stuck it inside the main ring. I hooked it up to a power source just to make sure that the connections were good. Once the wire wraps go on, the electronics are trapped, so I had to make sure that we wouldn't have any problems. At this point, the U-shaped pieces went on, and I began wrapping with a reddish 18-gauge copper wire. This was very time-consuming and kind of tricky, but the final ring looks fantastic. Now we approached the issue of powering this little device. Using an ammeter, we determined that our lights were pulling about 3.8 milliamps per LED. So you're actually kind of hosed. The original plan had been to power the arc reactor with four CR1616 batteries in the center of the unit, but each CR1616 only has about 60 milliamp hours. So we now realize that with 36 LEDs, four batteries would only give us about half an hour of light. We decided to move up to using CR2032s, which would give us a total of about three to four hours of light per set. So as a result of changing to CR2032s, we now had to accommodate larger batteries into the design. I modeled a puck-like unit that would fit the light ring snugly. It has an inner cavity for batteries and a wire, and a little more structure for the inner LED ring to sit in. It also has some other structure to hold the remaining aesthetic parts. Quick side note, I modeled everything for this project in SketchUp, which worked great, but I did find that it was most accurate to model everything at 10 times the size, and then shrink it down before printing. The first print of this piece did end up warping, so I printed it again, but with a couple of modifications. Before installing the main light ring, I soldered up the second inner light ring and wrapped up the connections. At the end of the second strip, I soldered two final wires. When these wires were hooked up to a battery, the circuit would be complete and light up. I inserted the main ring, which fit beautifully, and I protected the connections with hot glue and secured the inner ring. The positive wire I routed down below the battery cavity, and the negative wire came out and over to a small groove that I had modeled in one of the walls. 
Now to complete the circuit, the negative tip just needed to be connected to the top of the battery stack. This would be accomplished through the centerpiece of the reactor. I modeled this clear piece that could snap in over the wings of the housing piece. I attached a wire coil to the underside of this piece that comes into contact when you rotate it. This thing needed more decoration, so I modeled some other decorative pieces and added a wire wrap. The rest of the details on the reactor piece were purely aesthetic, but really make the look. I coiled up some more copper wire and glued the coils into the back of the cavity. I also printed a circular piece in black which sat on the wings of the housing piece. With this, the arc reactor puck was complete. Now it just needed to be attached to my chest. I came up with the idea for a sort of harness that would strap around my chest and neck and hold a cup in the center that the puck would sit in. I modeled this center cup with four square clipping points. I also modeled the other halves of the clips that could have bands sewn to them. The main part of the harness was at first too small to fit both the shirt and the reactor, but by making the cavity bigger and adding some duct tape, it was a perfect fit. I then started sewing elastic to my clips and sewing these strips together. My harness soon came to be nicknamed the Iron Bra, but it was pretty appropriate. Eventually, it was all ready. Now this project took a lot of work and time, mainly because I came up with an original design concept and modeled all the parts myself. As you can see this project is also heavily reliant on a 3D printer, and anyone with 3D printing experience knows that there's going to be a lot of trial and error involved with a project with 22 3D printed parts. Fortunately I'm making all the part files as well as an in-depth write-up of the process available on my Instructables account, so check out the link to that in the description. In the end, I do wish the centerpiece fit the unit better. It tends to pop out and break the connection. But other than that, I was overwhelmingly happy with this project's result. Not only did the arc reactor attract a lot of admiration at school, but it remains a great fallback costume for events, and has also helped me to feel like a boss during power outages. Alright, that's it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.